Week one is in the books, and there are a few poor souls out there that started T. Higgins, that started Drake London, that started Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, these locks of plays, and a couple of those guys put up donuts, zeros. So am I going to sit here today and make sure you don't do that again? No, because I don't know who's putting up zero, but I'm going to sit here and act like I know what I'm talking about and give you my week two rankings of the top 35 wide receivers and the top 30 running backs. Let's cook. Looking at the running backs, I don't need to babysit you. I need I don't need to hold your hand for the first few guys, but I will say Austin Eckler does need some notes. He's going through it, okay? Wednesday, he didn't practice. Thursday, he didn't practice. And on Wednesday, his agent passed away. Brother's going through it, like I said. So there is some hesitation around him. Obviously, if he doesn't play, don't start him. But if he does, he's still Austin Eckler. These are still half PPR rankings. He's still a stud running back one in fantasy. But Josh Kelly may have a role. I'll get into him later. But if Eckler plays, he's still RB6. A little bit of that applies to Aaron Jones, who's my RB11. Jones is dealing with a hammy. He didn't practice on Thursday. If he plays, I still like him to be a fringe RB1. If he doesn't, AJ Dillon, his brother right there on his shoulder, as you can see, he's all of a sudden in my top 30 running backs. He would get all the goal line work. He would be the workhorse of that Packers backfield. That's still an offense that's probably going to try and rely on their run game. So AJ Dillon will get quite the upgrade and he would be on this list. I'm not putting him there quite yet because we don't have the status. Into the juicy parts, the parts where I disagree with the consensus experts starts right there next to Aaron Jones my RB12 Damian Pierce I have him five spots higher than the experts why because of his matchup Damian Pierce is facing the Indianapolis Colts who allowed Travis Etienne to be the RB6 last week while Travis Etienne was splitting snaps with Tank Bigsby and I know while Damian Pierce is it's kind of two things like yes he's the alpha of this backfield but for some reason Mike Boone's coming in and carving out a role in the receiving game. So when it comes to the ground and pound work, Damon Pierce is going to be the guy. He's going to get the goal line work. And I like him to have a great game against the Colts. So he's not going to be this top 10 back because it looks like no matter what, he's still not going to have this huge receiving role. But this week against the Colts, he's a fringe RB1 for me. But a guy I'm a little bit lower on compared to the experts is Joe Mixon. I have him at RB16. The experts have him at RB10. I'm all good when you're facing this Ravens team. The Ravens team just shut down my RB12 and Damian Pierce. And to be honest, you know, this this isn't going to be the most statistical analysis right here what i'm about to say but joe burrow in this fucking wide receiver room was so bad last week this is a joe burrow t higgins jamar chase show to show they're still them boys they're still who day nation they're still in the jungle and could be a Super Bowl contender. They're going to be passing the ball a heavy ton, a lot ton, a bunch of. This is a balanced offense. Joe Mixon could have a better day than Damian Pierce did last week, but he's still a mid RB2 for me. He's not an RB1 like the experts have. Another one I'm apparently low on is my RB20, James Cook. Some experts have him as a top 15 back. Look, everyone's in love with James Cook got this workload. He, he was in on all downs, all snaps. You know, he got early downs. He got third downs. He got receiving work. Yada. After all that he got, you'd think he had a good game. Brother was still the RB 28 on the week. He didn't pop off. I, and I like James Cook. He's still a top 20 running back for me, as you can see. Throw him as a high RB2, like the experts have him. Coming off an RB28 performance, facing the Raiders now instead of the Jets. I don't know. I'd just rather be a week late on James Cook than a week early and we miss him flop. He's still not going to be the goal line guy. The receiving work is there. The receiving opportunity is there. But kind of like a I'll believe it when I see it thing to make him this top 15 running back in fantasy. Another guy I'm apparently lower on is Brees Hall. He's my RB26, but to me, that's a very fair ranking. Look, the Jets planned on easing in Brees Hall. Dalvin Cook still got most of the work on Monday Night Football. He had more carries than Brees Hall. They didn't plan on Brees Hall taking the 10 carries and the little bit of work they got to work him in to all of a sudden somehow be well over 100 yards. The dude popped off and he looked phenomenal. I still think they're trying to ramp him up to get those 15, 18, 20 carry games. Right now, I still think he's going to be limited in the 10 to 12 range and he might just not be as efficient. He won't be because he's facing possibly the best defense in the NFL the Dallas Cowboys I like Brees I like him the rest of the season a lot but in week two while he's still ramping up still getting back to business and on a limited role against the Dallas Cowboys uh, he's not a must start by any means for me let's go down to Josh Kelly similar to the Aaron Jones Ada Dillon thing if Eckler's out Kelly's flying up all right he he would be a top 18 running back for me if Eckler's out but as you can see even with Eckler being in he still made a top 
30 cut. That's because Kelly seemed to have carved out a role. It's not like he had five, six, seven, eight carries and he turned something into it. No, he split the backfield with Austin Eckler. Eckler had 16, Kelly had 16. That is a pretty balanced workload if you ask me. I really think Kelly could work his way into being the 50-50 goal line guy with Eckler. All of a sudden, be one of the best waiver wire pickups in week one that lasts a whole season as long as he stays efficient. I'm not expecting him to put up RB10 numbers every week like he did, but clearly I'm expecting him to put up top 30 numbers in a split backfield that he's earned a role in. Last guy I'll touch on real quick, Tyler Algier, similar thing. He's got a role, but he's not going to be putting up 75 yards and two touchdowns every single week. Bijan's eventually going to surpass him. Tyler Algier could cement himself in as the goal line guy. He's a big, hefty dude, but the ground and pound and the early downs starter drives i think eventually that's going to go to Bijan. but as of right now algier you've earned a spot in the top 30 brother congrats moving on to the wide receivers i don't need to babysit you but there is one guy in this top five i'm doubling down on calvin ridley in week one i said he was a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy i'm doubling down this dude's now top five maybe not whole season i still think he's elite but this week specifically in the slug fest game script against the kansas city chiefs jaguars chiefs week two is week one dolphins chargers this is a shootout we we are looking for Calvin Ridley's gonna pop off. Saw him do it against the Colts in a game where the Jags actually do need to be slinging the rock down the field. Ridley's gonna benefit from it. As you can see, if you look ahead, I got three Jaguars on this list. I'm pretty hype over this game and I'm pretty hype on this Jaguars offense. They're all gonna eat a little bit on Sunday. Next guy I wanna touch on is jumping down a wide receiver 19, Garrett Wilson. Everyone is terrified of Garrett Wilson at this point and it is for good reason. You're going from Aaron Rodgers to Zach Wilson. We don't need to overthink it, but people are putting him in like wide receiver 25, wide receiver 30. Nervous, you're panicking. Like I said, smart. If you're delusional and think he's still this top eight wide receiver, you're you're crazy. It's better to be cautious and not i still kept him inside the top 20 this jets team can still mac manufacture plays for him he's still an elite wide out that put up 1100 yards with the shit qb situation last year i'm gonna give the kid the benefit of the doubt he's, he does have a tough matchup this week against dallas but again based on pure talent and what this offense is built around i think he'll still have an important role that puts up some type of numbers d hop wide receiver 20 right behind wilson i'm a little hesitant he did not practice on thursday but if he does play the dude was racking in targets and receptions he was easily the titans number one guy and this was all in a game where Ryan Tannehill was dog shit. And at this point, that might be who Ryan Tannehill is, a bad quarterback. But he could go from dog shit, three interceptions to, you know, even below average would be an upgrade at this point. So if he does play, good for him. He's a top 20 wide receiver. If he doesn't, he's obviously out of this list. And Traylon Burks would get a boost. And yes, he would make my top 35 if D-Hop falls out. So keep that in mind if you have him stashed on your bench and D-Hop isn't playing. Let's jump down the road to wide receiver 24 and 25. George Pickens, Deontay Johnson. Johnson is out. He's gone. George Pickens, it's his time to step in and be the wide receiver one of this offense for a short period. He's not going to get the separation. He doesn't have the route running like Deontay Johnson does, but Deontay Johnson doesn't have the hands that George Pickens does. So he might be mossing them. And, and that's what really matters. It doesn't matter how he got the catch, how he got open or how he got the reception. It just matters that he gets it. And his workload is going to increase with this Steelers team pretty much needing to rely on him. And I think on Monday Night Football, this dude gets in the end zone and might just rack up over six receptions. We'll have to see. But he flowers, wide receiver 20. 25. Believe it or not, that's a little low in uh, some rankings. Some people have him in that top 20 already. And what I saw from Zay personally, I loved. He looked phenomenal. No joke, rookie of the year race phenomenal. But this was against the Texans and this without Mark Andrews. Got a tougher matchup against the Bengals now and Mark Andrews could be playing. I'm kind of in the middle. You know, I'm not fading him by any means. He's still a top 25 wide receiver for me. Clearly, given the circumstances being a little bit tougher, I'm not giving him every type of prop, every flower with Zay Flowers, no pun intended. I'm giving him a little bit of flowers, but people put him in the top 20 it's just it's not the same situation as it was last week keep on going wide receiver 25 now it's wide receiver 26 time jerry judy this is another guy i gotta believe it i gotta see it till i believe it i might have said that backwards earlier whatever jerry judy deserves to be in the top 35 of my wide receivers he's in a respectable spot but i'm not giving him this top 24 top 20 spot he's not a wide receiver two must start just yet for me again till i see it wide receivers 27 through 30 give us a second chance DJ Moore, Tyler Lockett, Christian Kirk, and Drake London. Look, there's a reason to like and hate all of these guys. A lot of the hate's going to be the fact that they did nothing for you last week, but part of the good is the situations they're in. You know, DJ Moore's a wide receiver one, but can his quarterback support a wide receiver one? Kirk, Lockett, both very reliable guys last year, and Drake London showed a lot of spark and a lot of potential at the end of last season, but Arthur Smith hates fantasy football. With all that said, that's where I'm putting them. Flex spot, fringe wide receiver twos, they're not must starts, but I'm not giving up on them, but I 
any means after just went one week either. A lot of these guys will still make my lineups if I need them in a flex position or if I'm in a deeper league. Puka Nakua, wide receiver 31. I actually have him a little bit low compared to the experts. I, I don't really see how. Look, 15 targets a game is just not something that's sustainable. Even if you are the next Cooper Cup and you happen to be on the team, Cooper Cup plays for with the quarterback that supported Cooper Cup, with the coaches that supported Cooper Cup. 15 targets, guys, that, that's a lot. However, I know you just spent everything you could to get him in the waivers. I like him for the rest of the year. I'm not fading him completely. Again, if the guys on the list, I'm, I don't dislike them, okay? They got enough respect to be talked about. But against the San Francisco 49ers, not a must start. I'll throw them in there, have some fun, go ahead, but don't be delusional and start this guy over some clear-cut guys that need to be in your lineups. Mike Evans, Mike Williams, Michael Thomas, all the Mikes. If you got a mic, throw him in there over Puka for at least week two, trust me. Zay Jones, like I said, I'm just really high on this Jaguars offense this week in the game script and the, the shots at that game could be like a 30, 34 bloodbath. Kendrick Bourne, this is actually very high. I've met wide receiver 33. This is like 18 spots up from the experts, no joke. And you know, some people might throw it under the rug of like week one, anyone could pop off, anything could happen. The way I say it is week one, you think it happen, but week one is any time for a guy to emerge as the guy. And you look around the Patriots wide receiver room and it's like yeah that makes sense who else would it be what did we really expect Juju to be the wide receiver one did we expect Devontae Parker to have the wide receiver one they'll have their days or they got a touchdown that makes them look nice but KB I think he might be the best wide receiver in this room Mac Jones looked pretty decent in this new offensive system now they got a real offensive coordinator in the building they struggled against the Eagles early but they got it together Romeo Dobbs this is under the assumption Christian Watson doesn't play he did not practice Thursday so Dobbs looked good in week one looks like he might still be the one in this wide receiver room as of right now until Watson's back so therefore he's getting a spot if Watson does play obviously Dobbs takes a step back and Watson to be honest would be a top 25 wide receiver for me probably bumping out Zay Flowers if he's on the field they're going to get him the ball they're going to manufacture plays to where he's involved heavily and then finally Jackson Smith and Jigba kind of like the Jags I'm just big on the Seahawks offense this week I think against Detroit this is a good game script for them to get heavy in the passing game for them to bounce back kind of like the Bengals Seahawks they're copying teams from all over they got a very well rounded offense and speaking of smith and jigba he's kind of the reason why i have tyler lockett so low a lot of people still have lockett as a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy i kind of took him out of that range because i'm higher on smith you know if you're low on jigba that makes sense for you to be high on lockett i'm not low on lockett i'm just high on in jigba and therefore those guys are gonna be pretty close they kind of share that wide receiver two role while dk does his thing it isn't gentlemen that is what we're cooking up what's the over under on how many of these guys put up zero probably more than we'd like you know more than zero itself hurts but hopefully week two hopefully guys you know that have proven and been consistent in the past they show that they're still that guy and don't put up a donut for us next time let me know what you want do you want quarterbacks are you good with running backs are you good with wide receivers my hair is growing back you know come october we'll probably be fine but as of right now you still got walter white giving out running back and wide receiver rankings if any breaking news happens between now and sunday you can get the updated rankings immediately of when i update them on bdge.com where you can subscribe to the immediate and present rankings again if some game change and breaking news occurs as always in the course like comment sub follow keep on coming back ladies and gentlemen i think i said ladies and gentlemen 17 times now thank you and good night